AMD is back at it again after their last faux pas with Anti-Lag Plus, this time with a whole new Anti-Lag 2. But before we go any further, let me explain what the hell Anti-Lag is and what's new with V2. Anti-Lag is AMD's input latency reduction tool that, until now, has been totally in driver. That means no matter the game, so long as you have an AMD GPU, you can enable anti-lag and lower your latency. Games don't need to support it because, well, it's all in driver. I've done videos testing it in the past and in the right scenario, it can make a massive difference. Anti-lag has been around for quite a while, a good four years at this point in fact, so when AMD announced anti-lag plus around nine months ago, well, it was a welcomed upgrade. Anti-Lag Plus was basically an upgraded version of Anti-Lag that still did basically all of it in driver, but it did more active, like messing around with the render pipeline type tweaks in the background. This turned out to be a not so great idea because messing around with the game engine's backend functions is exactly what most cheat engines do, and so Valve in particular made it clear that anyone using Anti-Lag Plus would be getting a VAC ban. And that brings us nicely onto Anti-Lag 2. This is a pretty big step for AMD, as this is no longer just a driver-only tool, but a game-specific implementation that requires the game developers to build it into their games. The good news is that AMD is pretty committed to being open and making tools like this open source and freely available, so really any developer that wants an extra feature to shout about can add this in and pretty much everyone gets a win. With that said, the only game, at least so far, that has uh, taken AMD up on that offer is CS2, so that's what we'll be testing here. Now, AMD says in their blog post about Anti-Lag 2 and CS2 that it's for RX, a Radeon RX 7000 series cards and 8000 series APUs, although the driver page says that the driver is suitable for all modern AMD GPUs. So before getting into the RX 7900 GRE that AMD sent me to do this testing, I want to test it with an older card. I've got an RX 6900 XT, which happens to be right around the same performance as this GRE, but from the previous generation, so we can see if that makes, well, any difference. The setting in CS2 does show up on both cards, it's just at the bottom of the Advanced Settings tab, although AMD would recommend that you enable the original anti-lag in the driver too, so you'll need to head to the driver and then the game tab, uh, and then ideally enable it globally as well as also go into the CS2 tab and enable it there. Otherwise, you're pretty much set to go with both of those features. Testing-wise, as with all of my latency testing videos, I'll be using my very own open source latency testing tool, or OSLTT, that I both designed and manufacture right here at home. If you want a latency tool to test your own stuff, I sell them over at osrtt.com, and I actually have a new version coming out really soon, I'm really excited. Anyway, uh, that'll be linked in the description if you're interested. As for the testing itself, I use the mouse move function where the tool will instantly snap the mouse cursor left or right depending on what you pick and record the light level change as soon as it's initiated the move. I prefer the mouse move function over left clicking and trying to capture muzzle flashes. One, because there's no animation delay in just moving the mouse, whereas there often is for muzzle flashes and things like that. Two, it's more consistent both for the tool's light sensor and the results themselves. And three, because it means that I can do 250 moves in one go to get beautifully accurate data without having to reload a gun every 20 rounds. So that's the test. Now let's take a look at the data. The way I see it, we have four possible combinations. Both versions of anti-lag off, in driver only on, and in game only on, and then both of them on. So that's what I've tested here. In that order, in fact, and so at least on the 6900 XT on low settings at 1440p, well, it looks like none of those settings really do much of anything. 
In fact, with both anti-lag and anti-lag 2 enabled, we actually get the worst result on average at 8.4 milliseconds, although that is only 0.2 milliseconds slower than the next results and 0.5 milliseconds slower than the fastest results, so it's not exactly a wide margin or a significant impact. Throwing in the FPS data too, you can see that with both features disabled, we actually get more performance than any other result. And inversely, with both features on, we get less performance. Now we're only talking about 475 FPS versus 509 FPS, so not exactly what you'd call an appreciable difference, but it's interesting to see nonetheless. That difference in latency might well just come from the FPS difference, with the slight exception of the double off results showing that specifically or especially the in driver version is doing at least a tiny bit of magic in the background. But realistically, it isn't doing that much. So is that just because Anti-Lag 2 just doesn't work on older cards? Well, no. AMD sent over this Sapphire RX 7900 GRE for me to run some tests with, and testing on the same low settings at 1440p, you'll see the same pattern of functionally no difference between the four modes. In fact, the spread is actually even tighter with just 0.2 milliseconds separating the fastest from the slowest. The most interesting thing though is looking at the FPS data, where the double off result had a significant performance lead, like 10% more performance at 555 FPS versus around or just under 500 FPS. And yet again, it had the slowest latency, again showing that the features are doing something but still not exactly much. So how is it that AMD is claiming up to an average of 37% lower latency in CS2 with anti-lag and anti-lag 2? I mean, they show receipts on the blog post showing pretty significant gains. The GRE in particular goes from 19 milliseconds to just 11 milliseconds with both enabled. So what's the deal? Well, AMD tested with basically maximum settings, the very high preset specifically, and 4K. Now, I'm going to stick with 1440p, so the gains are going to be a little less impressive here, but I will stick it on very high so that you can see the difference. Finally, we can see some actual differences. A 17% decrease in latency, in fact. Hooray! <laughs> You can also see that the in-driver uh, mode does sort of less work than the, the in-game feature, but they do both work together to help lower the latency more than just one or the other. Adding in the FPS data, and you can see a, a few interesting things. First, there's functionally no performance difference between any of the modes here, unlike at lower settings and that enabling anti-lag 2 in-game gets you a less stable gaming experience. The 1% lows drop considerably compared to with, the other, with that mode off, and bear in mind that this is just the player standing you know, still in an empty lobby just moving the mouse slightly, meaning this is as stable as CS2 gets, and so a change here is potentially more significant than usual. Also, the fact that it's consistent between both in-game features enabled runs indicates a bit of a pattern. Although personally, I think most of this discussion is kind of moot anyway, since if you cared about latency, you wouldn't be playing on the very high preset. You'd play on low like everyone else, and if you did, regardless of these anti-lag settings, you would get less latency and more FPS than even the best result I got with both anti-lag and anti-lag 2 enabled on very high. In fact, I've actually found a, a great way to get exactly 37% lower latency in CS2. Just swap from very high to low and you will get the 37% lower latency that AMD is claiming these features offer. Amazing! <laughs> But no, no, seriously, for CS2 in particular, but really any competitive game like it, the lower the settings, the lower the latency, and the more performance you'll get. It's that simple. For more story-based games where graphics quality often takes precedence over outright performance and latency, having a feature like Anti-Lag 2 built in 
will be a useful tool. And the fact that it's freely available for developers to implement is fantastic. We've shown here that it can make a difference. And so for the right games, I'm actually pretty excited to see this rolled out. Something like Cyberpunk could really do with having this built in. But for competitive games like CS2 or Rainbow Six Siege, you're better off focusing on getting the most performance with the least post-processing features on, and you'll get better latency than these features could ever provide on the road. If you want to know what the best settings for Siege or CS2 or even Apex Legends and a bunch of other games, I've done full latency guides that I'll link in the cards above or on the end cards for you to check out. Of course, if you want to check out more videos like this one and be notified when they go up, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on Anti-Lag 2 in the comments down below. What do you think about the feature? Obviously, do you have an AMD GPU? Is this relevant to you or not? Let me know in the comments down below. Feel free to check out, like I said, plenty of other videos in the end cards. And if you want to be able to test stuff like this yourself, I do sell the open source latency testing tools at osrtt.com. And that's linked in the description as well. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.